So here we have Banana Slip Walk Final. He walks along, falls over as expected. So, time to get this jacket uh, sorted out. First we have to uh, prepare uh, the animation. I've isolated all the animated bones of the armature on their own armature layer here. Uh, select them all. Uh, we need to go to frame 0. I don't want to upset the animation we've got on frame 1, so go back to frame 0. Uh, Alt-R, Alt-G, Alt-S pops the, frame, uh, the armature back to its rest position. I lock rot scale. So now we've got a keyframe in that uh, uh, opening position. Let's open up the window here in the graph editor so we can see what's going on. Uh, home to reveal all of the uh, keyframes, A, A to select all. Zoom right in because we want to now deselect uh, that frame zero, uh, those frame zero keyframes. There we go. Uh, and with the rest of this is the, the what's what remains selected is the actual animation, G, X, and 20. We've moved the entire thing along. 20 frames. Let's just sort out the extent of the animation now. We've added 20 frames to it, so E in the timeline, and that resets the end of the animation. Uh, go back to the beginning on frame 1. He's, he's sort of almost exactly on the rest. He's one frame off the rest position, so that's near enough for our purposes. And if we hit play, Alt A, he uh, slowly and gracefully settles into the opening starts and boom, he's away. Now the reason we go to all that kerfuffle, if we look in the layer underneath my character here, here is the actual cloth sim element of the whole, whole, uh, whole rig. I have a proxy jacket uh, and only the part of the jacket that needs animating with a cloth, cloth sim. We'll have a look at that in more detail a bit later. But the jacket, uh, the proxy jacket is, is animated by a proxy body which in turn is animated by a proxy rig. It, I had to go to this level of complexity to, to finally cut out all the circular reference errors I was getting with this damn process. Uh, but Having, having got this far, it, it works fine. Here's the actual jacket rig. Uh, let's select a bone at random. Have a look at the complaints. Uh, complaints. The constraints. The constraints are a complaint. Um, they've all got an IK chain length of 1. Uh, pointing in this case at jacket empty 009. Let me see. I'm guessing it is this one right here. Jacket empty 009. It in turn is vertex parented to three vertices in that general area of the jacket. So if I choose one vertex at random and, and go G and wiggle it about, you can see the empty is moving, is animated. So as the cloth sim animates the jacket, it in turn animates the all of the empties, which in turn animate the bones of the armature. Uh, now, as to why the jacket is ballooning out in front of the character. It's because this jacket, this, uh, this proxy rig, uh, I've left it at, uh, at, at the end of the last uh, animation I, I baked uh, in its in a, a sort of off-center position. So I just need to Alt R, Alt G, Alt S that and it snaps back into position. And you can see now my actual uh, character's jacket has itself snapped back into the correct position. Uh, and now, uh, opening up the layer with the with the actual rig on it, there's the proxy hip bone uh, in identical position to the actual hip bone. So the rest position is identical on both armatures. Now all we have to do is make the animation identical on both arm armatures. So select all the bones of the proxy rig. I lock rot scale. Actually, it would help if we were on on uh, frame <laughs> frame zero. So control Z that go back one to frame zero. And in fact, more than help, it's it's essential that uh, these are identical animations. So uh, we've uh, lock rot scale on frame zero. 
uh, back to the original rig, uh, select, well in fact we need to make sure that all of the animation data is uh, available, select all, AA to select all of the keyframes, make sure all of the little eyes are on. Now we'll go to thigh.r, let's open up these windows a little bit so we can see what's going on. Middle mouse button, drag the, um, the menu bar at the bottom here right to the very end so we can see the copy uh, keyframes button there, boom, copy all those keyframes. You can see lock rot scale, that's why I put a lock rot scale on the proxy rig. Thigh.r on the proxy rig, lock rot scale, so now we can just hit um, paste animation and boom, there is the identical animation on at least the thigh bone. So now it's a matter of just sequentially going through all the bones of the armature. Uh, one by one, select uh, a bone, copy animation, select its um, corresponding bone in the proxy rig, paste animation. Select the hip, uh, copy, select the proxy, hip, paste, and we're away. So there's got to be a faster way of doing this. I haven't bothered trying to find out, quite frankly. There's only 17-odd bones that need, um, need the animation copied over. Or maybe a couple now because I added the arm bones in. Um, but it, it takes no time at all. I just do it one, uh, one at a time. Uh, is fine by me. Uh, so there we are. We're done. You know, with the with the magic of um, speeding up the the, <laughs> the video, it takes no time at all. Literally. Now I'll give it a very creative name: Banana Slip Walk Final Proxy. Uh, give it a false user, so I don't lose it. Uh, it, it don't really have to, I'm not going to be trashing all this once it's done anyway, I don't need to keep any of this, but in order to get the thing going in the first place, uh, I have to go through all of this. So there we go, now the proxy body is walking exactly the same as the uh, actual body, which in turn will animate the cloth sim on the, uh, the jacket uh, exactly as we want it uh, to be animated. So. About time we looked at that, here's the uh, modifier panel. I have to re-enable the uh, little camera and eye icon on here. I turn that off while I'm working on other things because uh, your work slows to a crawl otherwise. Every time you change a keyframe uh, or change the frame number uh, on the animation, Blender wants to recalculate the cloth sim for you. Uh, here we are in the cloth sim panel. I'm waving my cursor over the top of all these little numbers knowingly, but the plain truth is that I arrived at this by trial and error. You can see it's only pinned by a little bit at the back of the clock collar. The actual object itself is parented uh, to the, the chest bone of the proxy rig. Uh, and the rest is, is, is all the cloth sim. So as I say, I can't talk to you knowledgeably about any of this. I, uh, I follow tutorials, I copied what other people had done, I tweaked and I changed and I ended up with the numbers that I've got here because it happened to look like what I wanted it to do uh, for a jacket in motion. One thing I will say down here and at the repel setting, if it's anything other than zero, I fi found it just sent the whole cloth sim haywire. Uh, repel distance likewise is on absolute minimum. A little bit of friction there, and the same goes for the self-collision. If I enabled that, uh, it, just, uh, it just went berserk. So I left that off, found I didn't need it anyway. Uh, the tie has its own cloth sim, but with almost identical numbers on it. Uh, so there we go. Make sure the frame range is correct. That is. That's all right. Uh, go back to the jacket. Save your work. Hit Bake All Dynamics, and we'll be back with the actual sim in the next episode.